welcome back to this segment of Village in Motion. It is Thursday, October the 11th, and I got it right this time. And we are so glad that you've decided to join us. In the studio for this segment is two of our employees here at Greenspring. We have our, late, our not our latest, but our next to latest <laughs> Associate Executive Director, Brad Andrus. And also he has a guest with him this morning that I'm going to let him introduce. And glad to have both of you. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you for uh, for being here to introduce Anne Anastasio. Okay. She is our new certified home health manager, mm -hmm. and so I will let her tell you all about that and what that means. Okay. Uh, but we're excited uh, about her being here, and yeah, she's uh, she's got some some interesting things to share about. Um, well, I won't steal oh. your thunder. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, right. so you're certified. That means you've been stamped and approved. Right? Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I, I come with a long background of uh, home care nursing over 20 years, wow. and uh, with specialties in quality documentation and um, organi organizing home health. And what we're trying to do is grow the home care services here, which is a little bit different than mm -hmm. the home support services that are done here. Please explain, because <laughs> everybody gets confused. I get always get confused. It is, it is it. very confusing, I have to admit. Home care is more of a skilled service, so uh, residents would have to be homebound, and that doesn't mean they can't go to get their meals at the, uh, the, the dining areas. It doesn't mean that they can't go to the medical center, mm -hmm. but it means that they really shouldn't be going out and going shopping or going to um, casinos, things like that. They mm -hmm. need to be here. We provide skilled services in nursing for for example, diabetic education, congestive heart failure, medication management, uh, wound care, uh, anything along those lines we'll do. Okay. And then we have physical therapy who will help with the rehab process. So between physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy to help, for example, uh, a resident recovering from a stroke or to be able to uh, control the congestive heart failure better. So really the differential on that is the fact of whether you have a physician's order or not, right? Correct, correct. You have to have a physician's order for home care. Mm -hmm. We need a, f it, because this is a skilled service, this is covered under Medicare. Medicare pays for the home care services, and as long as the uh, residents meet certain criteria, which we make sure are there, of uh, a skilled service that can only be, be provided by a skilled service such as nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy, mm -hmm. then we can see the patient. Is that in 15 minute intervals or is that 30 minute intervals or what is it? The amount of service, the time that you're in with, with a resident can vary. So generally a visit is, will be about an hour because we're doing oh, a lot okay. of education. So for example, a nurse may be seeing a patient who's a new diabetic, going over the medications, going over diabetic uh, teaching, how to check their blood sugars, how to keep their logs, or a congestive heart failure patient making sure that they are understanding how to take their medications, how to find the signs and symptoms of uh, decline so mm. that we can keep people out of the hospital, keep them here in their residence. Okay, very nice. Mm -hmm. And you, you came to us after 20 years of experience. Yeah, <laughs> um, I worked for a large home care company and uh, with a lot of changes going on, unfortunately my job was, was eliminated, mm. And but it put me in a different path that I'm really excited about. Wonderful. I also have a big background in quality management of documentation, making sure we're following all of Medicare's rules and regulations, making sure there's not redundant work being done in, in the line of paperwork because unfortunately this field is very paperwork heavy mm. and we want to make sure that our, our staff is happy, that that our residents are happy, that we're really providing a good win-win situation for them. Do we have enough staff in, in home health care, home care, to, to meet the needs? At this point, yes, and we're growing because the company is small right now. Our, our caseload is small, but we're growing it as we're, uh, we're, we're slowly building up. Okay. Yeah, so we're, we're looking for referrals or if people are not sure that they should be using a skilled service, they can give us a call or they can give their physicians a call and then we can determine if they are appropriate for uh, our home care services. Okay. Let's say today I call you and say I need, I need your service, mm -hmm. okay, I need to be assessed. Will I get the same person every time thereafter? We usually try to do that. It depends on the caseload at that time, but generally if a nurse is in there, it's the same nurse or one or two nurses who will come and see you because we like to keep that continuity of care. And with physical therapists or any of the therapists, they do try to keep the same person. Okay. Not always guaranteed though. Not like home support where it may be changing. Correct, okay. correct. All right. What can we as staff, no, excuse me, as residents do to assist you in, in coming in you and, and providing the services you're providing, what can we do? 
Um, you as residents, what yes. can you do? Uh, work with us, ask questions, be open to suggestions. We, home care is very holistic. It revolves around the client themselves. It doesn't revolve around us. We try to give you the tools that you need to improve yourself. So we want to work with you. What, what works, what doesn't work? Mm -hmm. Are you absolutely refusing to do this, but you're willing to give that a try? So it's a lot of going back and forth. As I said, it all focuses around uh, the resident that we're seeing. Okay. And communication. We're really big into communication. If, if something's not working, we want to know it so we can, we can correct that. Mm -hmm. How often do you see someone? It will depend on what the focus of the care is. So, for example, if someone is being seen for wound care, the orders may be specific for three times a week. Generally, new clients we will see a little more frequently, depending if they just got out of the hospital, acute care hospital, if they just got out of the SNF. It really depends on their focus. But generally, nursing will be two to three times a week for uh, maybe two, three, four weeks, depending on the need. We are there as long as there's a skilled service being provided that the client is learning what they need to learn to take care of themselves. We give the tools to you to learn how to take care of yourselves because we can't hold you all the way through as much as we'd love right. to. Uh, we, we are educating you in how to take care of yourself or your caregiver to help take care of you. Well, with your service, are you making independent living more an assisted living? Uh, no, we're keeping it more independent. We want to keep people as independent as possible okay. because it is a, a short-term care. We're generally not in for a long time. There are some uh, residents that we will see, for example, if they have a catheter bag that has to be changed every month. We, that could be something that is done over years okay. because that's a skilled service that cannot be done by the client themselves, and we can come in and do that. So the individuals you see would be in independent living? Yes. And they would not necessarily need an aid? Correct. But we, can, we also provide skilled nursing services um, I think we have one home health aide at this point who will help with the personal services, getting the bathing done mm. and getting them set up, but that's a short intermittent service. Mm -hmm. And that is covered under Medicare. So that could be, for example, the aide would come in three times a week to help with bathing, personal care. It's not a long-term service like uh, the home support would provide of having a companion staying with them. Okay. What I'm, the reason I'm asking that, I was thinking about the fact that we've got a wait list, as I understand it, Brad for uh, Garden Ridge mm. uh, for assisted living. And how are those people getting the services they need? Do they need to go through you know, home care or what's happening? Yeah, so uh, as Ann mentioned, you know, certified home health um, in which Ann's you know, managing is really kind of that short you know, period. Mm -hmm. It might be after a hospital stay or um, in a more of an acute mm -hmm. um, you know, visit or series of visits. And then it's home support that is really managing like the 24 hour cases okay. in the independent living, you know, apartment until something opens up in Garden Ridge and assisted living. Um, you know, we, uh, we do have, you know, some availability in Garden Ridge skilled nursing, but yeah, you're right. Um, our memory care and AL uh, has stayed pretty full in the time, right. you know, that I've mm -hmm. been here. Um, almost 100% occupied, uh, you know, pretty regularly. So we do need some services to help people live uh, independently and, and supported in their independent living apartment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you guys are going to be providing some of that or are providing some of that? Where we can, yes. We, we, yeah. we work very closely with the home support services and with the, the residents and their families to see what's the best solution all around. Okay. How often would you come and see someone? Again, it depends on the skilled services that are required. So generally, it, we don't do daily services uh, for nursing for the most part. It might be two to three times a week for, mm -hmm. as I said, three or four weeks depending on the need. As, as long as it's what Medicare considers a skilled service, which could be um, the wound care, could be education. But once that knowledge is learned, by the resident, then there's no more skilled services being provide, right. provided. Because remember, it's being you know paid for paid by for Medicare. Medicare. Right. <laughs> yeah. And Medicare, Medicare wants controls. to keep their money, yes. <laughs> <laughs> With your services, everyone here basically, basically everyone has Medicare, mm -hmm. although there are a couple that do not. Uh, and when I moved in, I didn't. It was really quite an experience of people trying to figure out how to bill out services for mm -hmm. me yeah. when I first moved in. Uh, 
do people utilize their, their secondaries in, in order to provide your services? Or they just use the secondary to cover what Medicare doesn't? Uh, yeah. yeah I, I believe Medicare generally covers 100% of the skilled services. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Short term, acute, mm -hmm. covered, fully covered by Medicare. Okay. Uh, and then there's a point in time where there may be, you know, ongoing home support. All right. Okay. Yeah. You have nurses. Mm-hmm. How do you verify, certify that they have the skills that are needed? Hopefully that was determined before they were hired here. The other thing that I will be doing as a clinical manager is going out with our staff to evaluate them out in the field. Because one, I also want to meet the clients that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, th this type of setting is different than the usual home care situation, which is going out to private homes right. out in the community. Uh, in all different type of situation, whereas here, most of the, the living situations are pretty similar. Right. But it, it's seeing, are they understanding what education needs to be done, what skills are needing to be done. We do uh, ongoing education, which I'll be providing more education to our clinical staff to know how to properly educate in congestive heart failure or other disease processes. Hmm. And okay. safety, a lot of safety. Uh, that's what the therapists will do, a lot of home safety eval keep people from falling. Yes, yes. Very important to stay mm, away from falling. Yeah. <laughs> but you do not have any uh, criteria for, for people being hired then. You are not involved in that hiring process. I probably will be in the future. This is uh, my second week in the job, sure, so sure. I'm still kind of learning the in and now. But I, I think it's important to have uh, clinicians that you can work with who follow the same idea that you follow, that right. you want to make sure you're giving the best care. Um, with the best education, the best knowledge, the best staff. Okay. No, absolutely. And of course, anyone that you know is hired by you know our human resources department. Not only you know are they meeting you know the criteria mm -hmm. from a clinical standpoint or a caregiving standpoint, but also you know the the foundational you know competencies mm -hmm. um, okay. and being able to work you know with a you know an elder population. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So if there is a uh, nurse at the resident's not satisfied with the care provided, what do they, what's the resident do? They would call me okay. and I would try to figure out what the issue is. I would talk to them, try to resolve it. Was it a miscommunication, a misunderstanding? Um, it's, yeah, we, we will do our best to, to solve any concerns, issues. Okay, very good. Any other words of advice or uh, pearls of wisdom, uh, you know, other than the fact that you're going to have a lot more after the next two weeks? <laughs> well, which is great because we want to grow the business. Um, if, if you're not sure that home health is appropriate for you, you can get in touch with the medical center. The physicians will uh, are educated, but we're going to be providing more education to the staff about what home care does, what we can and cannot do. Uh, if, if residents are interested in our services, they can give us a call, happy to talk to them, and we can talk them through how to do the referral process. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Well, Ann, welcome. We're glad Thank you're you. here. And we look forward to you staying with us a long time. I'm planning on it. All right. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, Brad, Brad, thank you so much for bringing in this morning and introducing her to all of us. And um, we're glad that you're here also. Mm -hmm. you're, you're on your third month now, right? Yeah, well, in my second month, yeah. yeah, yeah. Second so, month. but it, time's flying. Not not quite that fast. <laughs> but time's flying. So, thank you for having me. Well, we're glad that you're here. I'm glad you're thank with you. Us. Thanks again.